Translation. The personality of God and Lord Sri Krishna is in everyone, sorry, in every living being along with the individual soul. And this fact is perceived and hypothesized in our sec in our acts of seeing and taking help from the intelligence. Uh, are you going to go? You can read the purport if you wish to. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Purport by Shivan Grace Hasty Bhakti Vedanta Sam Prabhupada Ki Jai. The central argument of the common man is that the, is since the Lord is not visible to our eyes, how can one either surrender unto him or render transcendental loving service oh. unto him? To such a common man, here is a practical suggestion given by Srila Shukadeva Goswami as to how one can perceive the Supreme Lord by reason and per perception. Actually, the Lord is not perceivable by our present materialized senses. But when one is convinced of the presence of the Lord by a practical service attitude, there is a revelation by the Lord's mercy. And such a pure devotee of the Lord can perceive the Lord's presence always and everywhere. He can perceive that intelligence is the form direction of the Paramatma, plenary portion of the personality of Godhead. The presence of the Paramatma in everyone's company is not very difficult to realize, even for the common man. The procedure is as follows. One can perceive one's self-identification and feel positively that he exists. He may not feel it very abruptly, but by using a little intelligence. He can feel that he is not the body. He can feel that the, the hand, the leg, the head, the hair and the limbs are all his body parts and parcels. But as such, the hand, the leg, the head, etc. cannot be identified with, with his self. Therefore, just by using intelligence, he can distinguish the sub and separate his self from other things that he sees. So the natural conclusion is that the living being, either man or beast, is the seer. And he sees besides himself all other things. So there is a difference between the seer and the seen. Now by little use of intelligence, we can also readily agree that the living being who sees the, the things beyond himself by ordinary vision has no power to see or move independently. All other ordinary actions and perceptions depend on various forms of energy supplied to us by nature in various combinations. Our senses of perception and action, that is to say, our five perceptive senses, hearing, touch, sight, taste and smell, as well as our five senses of action, namely hands, legs, speech, evacuation organs and the reproductive organs and also our three subtle senses namely mind intelligence and ego 13 senses in all are supplied to us by various arrangements of gross and subtle forms of natural energy and it is equally evident that our objects of perception are nothing but the products of the inexhaustible inexhaustible permutations and combination of the forms taken by natural energy as this conclusively proves that ordinary living being has no independent power of perception of or, or of motion. And we <clears throat> undoubtedly feel our existence being conditioned by nature's energy. We conclude that he who sees his spirit and the senses as well as the objects of perception are material. The spiritual quality of the seer is manifest in our dissatisfaction with the limited state of materially conditions existence that is the difference between spirit and matter there are some less intelligent arguments that matter develops the power of seeing and moving as a certain organic development but such argument cannot be accepted because there is no experimental evidence that matter has anywhere produced a living entity trust no how future however pleasant idle talks regarding future development of matter into spirit are actually foolish because no matter has ever developed the power of seeing or moving in any part of the world. Therefore, it is definite that matter and spirit are two different identities. And this conclusion is arrived at by the use of intelligence. Now we come to the point that things which are seen by a little use of intelligence cannot be animate unless we accept someone as the user of 
of or director of the intelligence. Intelligence gives one direction like some higher authority and the living being cannot see or move or eat to do any or do anything without the use of intelligence. When one fails to take advantage of intelligence, he becomes a deranged, deranged man. And so a living being is dependent on intelligence or the direction of a superior being. Such intelligence is all pervading. Everything, every living being has his intelligence. And this intelligence being the direction of the some higher authority is just like father giving direction to his son. The authority, the higher authority who is present and read residing within the every individual a living being is the super self. At this point in our investigation, we may consider the following question. On the one hand, we realize that all our perceptions and activities are conditioned by arrangements of the material nature. Yet we also ordinarily feel and say, I am perceiving or I am doing. Therefore, we can say that our material senses of perception and action are moving because we are identifying the self with the material body. And the superior principle of super self is guiding and supplying us according to our desire. By taking advantage of the guidance of super self in the form of intelligence, we can either continue to study and put to put into practice our conclusion that I am not this body, or we can choose to remain in the false material identification, fancying ourselves to be the possessors and doers. Our freedom consists in orienting our desire either toward the ignorant material misconception or the true spiritual conception. We can easily attain to the true spiritual conception by recognizing the super self Paramatma to be our friend and guide by dovetailing our intelligence with the superior intelligence of Paramatma. The super self and the individual self are both spirit and therefore the super self and the individual self are both qualitatively one and the distinct and distinct from matter. But the super self and the individual self cannot be on an equal level because the super self gives direction or supplies intelligence and the individual self follows the direction and thus actions are permit performed properly. The individual is completely independent on the direction of the super self because in every step the individual self follows the direction of the super self in the matter of seeing, hearing, thinking, will, feeling, willing, etc. So far as common sense is concerned, we come to the conclusion that there, is, there are three identities, namely matter, spirit and super spirit. Now, if you go to the Bhagavad Gita or the Vedic intelligence, we can further understand that all three identities, namely matter, individual spirit and the super spirit are all independent, are dependent on the supreme personality of Godhead. The super self is a partial represent, representation of pre, plenary portion of the supreme personality of Godhead. The Bhagavad Gita affirms that the Supreme Personality of God dominates all over the material world by his partial representation only. God is great and he can he, he cannot be simply an order supplier of the individual cells. Therefore, the super self cannot be full representation of the super self. Purushottama, the absolute personality of God, God. Realization of the super self by the individual self is the beginning of the self-realization and by the by the process of such self-realization, one is able to realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead by intelligence. By the help of the authorized scriptures and principally by the grace of the Lord, the Bhagavad Gita is preliminary conception of the Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna and Srimad Bhagavatam is further explanation of the science of Godhead. So, if we stick to our determination and pray for the mercy of the director of this intelligence, sitting within the same bodily tree, like a bird sitting with another bird, as explained in the Upanishads, suddenly the purport of the revealed information in the Vedas becomes clear to our vision. And there is no difficulty in realizing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva. The intelligent man, therefore, after many births of such use of intelligence, surrenders himself at the lotus feet of Vasudeva, as confirmed by the Bhagavad Gita 7.19. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. So, the verse is, we will repeat the verse. The personality of God and Lord Krishna is in every living being along with the individual soul. And this fact is perceived and hypothesized in our acts of seeing and taking help from the intelligence. It's a very deep purport. It needs a lot of understanding so many things in a very technical way. 
So first try to understand the verse. Mm -hmm. The verse says, the Supreme Personality of God is in the heart of every living entity. Also Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, in two different verses, Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Hirdesha Arjuna Tishti. That's in the 18th chapter. That he is in the heart of everybody. Then he says, Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani Yantra Rudhani Mayaya. This body is like a machine. And I'm the actual controller. So Krishna is controlling everything. And how is Krishna present in our heart? In the form of super soul which is an expansion of Krishna. And the soul is another expansion of super soul. Very, both are not an equal platform. Soul is called Atma or Jivatma. Super soul is called Paramatma or in English we call it super soul or super spirit. So next he say, and this fact is perceived and hypothesized in our acts of seeing and taking help from the intelligence. Now you'll find that if one has good intelligence, one can perceive Krishna, otherwise it's not, not possible. It needs a very good intelligence. And if one wants a good intelligence, then one has to have a very clear heart. So here Sri Prabhupada says that many things because Krishna is not in front of us, how can we surrender to him? Well, if you are reading Bhagavad Gita, then Krishna was in front of Arjuna and Arjuna surrendered. So if we accept the word of God and we surrender the way Arjuna surrendered, we'll get the same results. So there's no argument whether Krishna is there or not. Krishna is always there. It's due to our ignorance that we think Krishna is not there. Now, how to surrender to him is by engaging in service and rendering service to him. In uh, two crucial slokas of Bhagavad Gita, he says, Man mana bhava mat bhakto. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, take refuge in me. And the other one says, give up all the varieties of religiousness and simply surrender to me. So if the two, these two verses are captured the mind, we can surrender. It needs a good intelligence. Now, if you go deep into the Sarva Dharma Paritajya, it literally means that forget the intelligence of everyone, use the intelligence which has been given by Krishna to you, and use the intelligence of Krishna. Now, you find in Bhagavad Gita in the 10.10, it says, Te sam sadata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yenavam upiyam. In that verse, the word buddhi is used. How can you get a good intelligence? Is by constantly engaging in the service of Krishna, not otherwise. After all, what is Krishna consciousness? Krishna consciousness means to obey Krishna, follow Krishna for our own good. For those who are accustomed to hear Sri Prabhupada's lecture, Sri Prabhupada explains that when you are dressing yourself, or combing your hair, putting on your tie, or doing some makeup in front of the mirror. You're actually doing this to the image of the mirror. But the result is coming to you. Mm -hmm. In the similar way, when you're serving Krishna, the result is actually coming to you. You become purified. So, that is called, that's how Krishna gives us the intelligence. So here, Sukhdeva Swami is trying to tell Maharaj Parikshit. You can perceive the Lord by two ways, by reasoning and by perception. So reason is also called, reasoning is called Nyaya, by using logic. We can use logic that this is matter and this is spirit. That is called logic. Now, if you go deeper into these two items, then we find that you can have a very fine intelligence by which you can understand so many things in the world. And not only that, you'll even rise beyond the bodily platform. That is the advantage. And perception means protection. Protection means seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, tasting. We gain some knowledge, and that knowledge later on, 
becomes established as good intelligence. So, what is a good intelligence? Good intelligence means when a person is inquisitive, an inquisitive person can become an intelligent person. How? Because when you ask how, why, why is it like this, till you don't, or, or don't ask questions, your intelligence doesn't open. You remain under an illusion. So that is called perception. For example, like, let's say you went into the city, like in Nairobi, Nakuru, Eldoret, then you may be wearing a tilak and people will ask you, what is this tilak on your head? Why do you put, put this sign on it? Then if you have intelligence, you will answer. If you don't have intelligence, then you may either say, I don't know, or you can say, it's none of your business. Or you may say that, explain what is that tilak. Or a shikha, or a kuntimala, or a dhoti, a sari, so many things. When people ask, you should be able to answer. All these are spiritual items and have connection uh, with Krishna directly. So, here, Sukhdeva Goswami says, by reasoning and by perception. <coughs> For example, when Ajamila, at the end of his life, when he got rescued, saved, by the Vishnu Dutas, he got a good reasoning where he was wrong. So Sri Prabhupada says that there are three kinds of people. And three people, three kinds of people have different intelligence. There are people who commit crime or sin or offense and be punished due to ignorance. There are people who hear about them and they take it for granted that I should not do this. And the third one is simply by seeing that the person who is committed wrong is being punished, he gets some intelligence. So, why the scriptures are given to us? Scriptures actually means intelligence of Krishna. Even Bhagavad Gita, even Bhagavatam, entire Vedas. The intelligence is that of Krishna. So, if you believe Krishna's intelligence, accept Krishna's intelligence, Naturally, that intelligence will take you to Krishna and reveal Krishna to you. For example, like all of us have day-to-day -day experiences and every day we feel that when we engage in devotional service with a very pure heart, we actually enjoy devotional service. But when our heart is not pure or we have some disturbance, we may be serving, but you don't enjoy doing it. At the end of the service, you may feel that today I did not serve properly. An easy example is chanting. When your body is very tired, you don't enjoy your chanting. When your mind is disturbed, don't, you don't enjoy your chanting. Or when you not heard about Krishna for a long time, you don't feel like chanting. But if, you, if it is the other way, you enjoy your chanting. And you feel, oh, why the time got finished so fast? I wish the time went a little longer. I would have done more rounds. Everyone has this experience. So the, at that time, our, the quota of 16 rounds may not be enough. We want to chant more. So in this way, we ourselves can reason and perceive all these things in our day-to-day -day life. Now, going to the purpose, Sri Prabhupada explains that actually with our materialized senses, we cannot see or perceive Krishna. Not possible. The famous shloka of Rupa Goswami, Atasi Krishna Navadi Navavi Kriya Indriya Sevan Mukhehi Jivado Swayam Eva Sutiyada. By our blunt senses, we cannot see or perceive Krishna. But if our senses are purified, beginning with the tongue, then Krishna will manifest himself to us. So are we supposed to see Krishna or are we supposed to serve Krishna first? Can anyone answer this question? Should we see Krishna or should we demand to see Krishna or should we engage in the service? What is, what is our duty? What should we do first? 
Anybody service. like Swami? Yes. yes. You start serving Krishna. Because when you serve Krishna, then the intelligence, along with the mind, along with the senses, <coughs> they all become purified. And as they become purified, then actually you can at least understand Krishna. And if you are fortunate enough, you will see Krishna. So here it says that it needs the mercy of the Lord. And how does the Lord give his mercy? To his pure devotee. He sends a devotee to you and reveals who is Krishna. For example, like when Prabhupada had not gone to America, hardly anybody knew who is Krishna. But when Prabhupada went to America, people started knowing who is Krishna. And today, Hare Krishna is like a household word to most countries of the world. Everybody knows what is Hare Krishna. But before that, nobody knew. So that is how Krishna is sending his mercy through his pure devotee. So if you take the shelter of a pure devotee and start serving Krishna, then by reasoning and by perception, you will understand Krishna. So Sri Prabhupada explains, one has to have a practical service attitude. First of all, with our impure senses, we can't know Krishna. But when the senses, I mean, when they are used in the service of Krishna, then the senses become purified. And as the senses become purified, you will know Krishna. The famous verses of the three verses of Amrish Maharaj, beginning with Savai Mana Krishna Padara Vindyo, Vachamsi Vaikunde Dunana Varmana, like that. <coughs> Amrish Maharaj used to always think of Krishna. How he used his eyes, seeing the form of Krishna. How he used his hands, by wiping the temple of Krishna. Nose by smelling flower offered to Krishna. Tongue by tasting to Shadam. Body to soak the Vaishnavas. Legs to go to the holy places. And desires to fulfill the desires of Krishna. That, that, that's why Amrish Maharaj becomes a very, very special, very special devotee, Matpara. And he's fit to become a Matpara because he uses all, used all of his senses in the service of Krishna, like in Iskon. At least two senses we are supposed to use daily, our tongue and our ear. That is how, I mean, when we chant, these two senses are used very nicely. Those who live near the temple or in the temple, even the eyes are used by seeing Krishna, smelling the flowers offered to Krishna, uh, incense offered to Krishna, seeing the dress of Krishna, you enjoy it. So in this way, various senses, when they are used in the service of Krishna, they become purified. And as the senses become purified, our it needs just a little intelligence. What is that intelligence is to obey the, the rules and regulations set by the Acharyas. If you go to the book known as an act of devotion, I think it's in the sixth chapter, 64 rules have been given. The first ones are Accepting the spiritual master, serving the spiritual master. Then later on, how to go about serving the spiritual master. Then how to go to temple, how to see the deity, how to go down, follow the rules and regulations, follow Ekadachi and so on. But if you see those 64 rules and regulations, the last five are very, very important. One is Harinam Kirtan. That is called we call it. Sankirtan Jagya, first one. Second one, living in a holy place like Mathura, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, then serving the deity, and the fifth one is associating with the devotees. If these five are done using just a little intelligence, then it awakens the dormant love of Krishna, which is already there. It's just like you have to open it. Just like if you keep the curtains closed, then your room will become dark. But you, as soon as you open the curtains, and as soon as the light comes in, then you can actually 
feel the daylight coming in your room in a similar way. If your senses, you close them, and if you don't use them in the service of Krishna, don't expect to see Krishna. Don't expect to see that. We have to open our senses, purify our senses, then let them enter, enter inside us. So this is how one can perceive. So, perceiving is done. Hare Krishna. So, is there some problem with the line of education? Okay. I hope it's okay. Hare Krishna, Braja Kishori Mataji. Ah, yeah, she is muted, Mat Prabhuji. No, you are also muted, Prabhuji. Okay, okay. I think she is okay. Yes. <coughs> I think she must be in a flu like mine, because my flu has also lived very long, almost for a week. The flu is gone, but the coughing has not gone. So anyway, when we use all our senses, here the list is given, five gross senses, five working senses, and then the mind, intelligence, and our ego. All these, when they use, are supplied to us. So by use of our intelligence, we can actually perceive Krishna. So in other words, if you use everything in the service of Krishna, first of all, all of our body, which includes all the senses, then you can easily perceive Krishna. It's not difficult. For example, if you hear uh, the story of Dhru Maharaj, how was Dhru Maharaj trained by Narad Muni? That when you go to the forest, you make a murti of Krishna, offer flowers to Krishna, then eat only fruits, in the beginning, later on, reduce your eating. And he was given the duties first month, second month, third month, fourth month, fifth month. And meditate upon Vishnu. He did not say meditate upon void. No. He was told to meditate upon the Supreme. And it did happen like that. He meditated and a five-year-old young boy, just Kshatriya boy, he was able to see Krishna in the matter of five months. He could perceive Krishna within the heart. And then on the day of, of the great day, the Lord actually appeared in front of him. So why this story of Dhruva is given? That he used all these senses in the service of Krishna. By using all our service, uh, senses in Krishna, there is the definition of Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga means using our purified uh, senses in the service of Krishna. This is the definition Sri Prabhupada gives many, many times in his different lectures. There's no bhakti when our senses are not pure. For example, you go to eat, it may be prashada, but you don't wash your hands, your legs, and you're not clean, and you just accept prashada. It's going to work no way. I mean, no wonder. But if you eat it the way it's prescribed, in a very clean way, quietly, then the effect is more. In other words, we don't eat, we honor prashadam. So that's one activity. Seeing the deity in the temple, Abhinamuni explains to Mother Devahuti in the third canto that when you see the Lord, you always see the Lord's feet first, and then gradually you raise your eyes up. You see the ankles, the thighs, the waist, the chest. The face like that. You gradually go up. Then meditate on each limb of Krishna. That is how the eyes are to be used. The scriptures give you all the intelligence. That's what Sri Prabhupada says. We have to use these two scriptures. Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. These two books are enough to reveal Krishna to you. Now... <coughs> Many people have that understanding 
that the soul or the life has come by the mixture of different elements. No. The life has come from life. Krishna gave us life. He says, I am the giver of life to all the existences in the seventh chapter. And also later on, he says, he's the giving father. So life doesn't come from matter. And if, if that was possible, then the scientists would have mixed some chemicals and produced life. So here Sri Prabhupada makes it clear that they tell you that in future, we will prove it. So in this sentence, he says, trust no future, however pleasant it may be. It looks very pleasing. Like today, people are very, especially men, are very proud. Oh, they've gone to the moon. They've, done, they've created motor cars. They've created mobiles, technology. They may be very proud. But what about, have they discovered who is Krishna? Have they discovered the origin of life till today? No. They have not done that. They have failed. That's what Sri Prabhupada says. Don't be cheated by these people. So, who is actually the director of our intelligence is Krishna. Why do we accept a Sri Master? Because our intelligence is not well done. But when you accept a Sri Master, you get the good intelligence. Because he gives you direction. Follow this direction. Follow this method. And act like this. And we followed our Sri Master 100%. Then the success is guaranteed. So it says here, every living entity has intelligence. Like a simple intelligence is to understand whether we are body or soul is touch any part of the body. Are you this head? Are you this shoulder? Are you the chest? No, the answer will be no, 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 no. Then who are you? Me. Or who am I? Is someone inside me. And that is the soul. Now, this needs a very, very simple intelligence. So, we have a right to investigate, a right to experiment, but follow the knowledge of footsteps already given to us. I can give you a practical example. Like, if someone I have met, for example, I met someone who knows Arya Govind Prabhu, and he speaks all ill about Arya Govind Prabhu. Oh, he's a useless fellow. Is this, is that. What impression did I get? That Arya Govind Prabhu is not a good person. So when I meet Arya Govind Prabhu, that, that intelligence will tell me he's not a good person. On the other hand, if I met someone else who knows Arya Govind oh, he's a good devotee, good standing, he does chanting, he follows the rules, and like that, I'll have a good impression. So if I meet Arya Govind, I'll see him as a devotee. Now see, see you compare in the former one. I had a bad impression. In the later one, I have a good impression. So whose intelligence should I use? You use the intelligence of the scriptures. You never go wrong. The scriptures, for example, the, the intelligence is uh, defined in the fifth chapter. Vidya, Vinaya, Sampane, Gavi, Brahmani, Hastini, Suni, Keva, Supakecha, Pandita, Samadarshini. Pandit means one is a good intelligence. He is able to see the Lord in the heart of all the living entities. Be he a Brahmin, a dog, or a tree, an elephant, or a very low-class man, he sees Lord in the heart of everyone. That is called a good intelligence. And this needs discrimination. Discrimination is one of the angles of intelligence. <coughs> <laughs> intelligence does many activities. And one of them is discrimination, decision, and how to perceive things properly and register in our brain. Yes, this is right. For anyone who is reading proper books after at least reasonable time, is able to accept that whatever Prabhupada is speaking is truth. And if I follow Prabhupada, I'll never go. Now, this builds a trust, and this trust is very useful. So in this section, we find that we all know that we have two souls, Atma and Paramatma. 
And Paramatma is also our friend and a guide. And we should dovetail our intelligence with the Supreme Person or through Paramatma. And when Paramatma sees that you're engaged always in the service of Krishna, the Paramatma will give you direction and the right intelligence. Just like in the Bhagavatam, many, many examples are given. How Krishna helps his devotee, giving a good intelligence. Intelligence is a factor of knowledge. With good knowledge, you get good intelligence. And Krishna says this, that to my devotee, I give him the intelligence that he cannot remain in darkness and he will have full knowledge. This is a special mercy of Krishna. I think it's in the 10th chapter. Tesam evan upam fatam aham agyana jamtana nashyami atma bhavasu gyana deepena bhashvita. I sit in the heart of my devotee and I light the lamp of knowledge so that he comes out of all the darkness. Now this can only happen if you become devoted to Krishna, not otherwise. So we have to become devoted to Krishna, who is in our heart, and understand at least three things. What is matter? What is spirit? What is super, super spirit? Three things. Matter means the body. Or you see that matter everywhere. That is matter. What is spirit is our soul. And what is super spirit? Or the supreme super spirit is the Lord in the heart. If these three distinctions are there, and the inter interrelationship, that is called knowledge. <coughs> <coughs> and the knowledge doesn't just come like that. You have to actually practice it. If you practice it day by day, you will enjoy it. Otherwise, it will become just a temporary kind of an excitement. It doesn't stay. It will go away. But if you practice it, then you will find uh, that you will actually enjoy this knowledge. For example, while in the Bhagavatam, there are many cases of a chaste woman, how they, they were so chaste. Like the famous example of uh, Shakuntala. I think everybody knows Shakuntala. She's the daughter of Vishwamitra and Menka. And both of them deserted her. So he, she was raised by a sage known as Kanwa. And one day, the king was visiting in the forest and he fell in love with uh, what he called Shakuntala. And just by seeing her, he knew that she's very pure. And Shakuntala also know that this king is very good. And in due course, they had she, I mean, they had a child who is known as Bharat. So she lived in the forest. The king returned to the kingdom. Then when Bharat was very, very brave, he's known for, for his bravery, he used to play with lions and tigers. When he came, I mean, when she came with her son to the king, the king did not recognize her. And even if he had, she, he had recognized, he cannot accept her due to some roots and regulations of a king. So the woman did not speak anything. She just kept quiet. She couldn't allow. Then there was a voice an unembodied voice means an oben from the sky and told the king Dushman, oh Dushman this is your wife and this is your son accept her accept your good son is a good son and do not insult your wife because if you did not accept Shakuntala then that is not a good behavior, it's an insult so he happily received or accepted both of them, Shakuntala and Bharat. And later on, Bharat became the king, or the emperor of the earth. So this, in, what do you call? If you go deep into these stories, it boils down to one point. We have to be pure in our heart, very, very pure. Understand the scriptures properly, then get the reasoning, then you perceive things, you can pursue Krishna everywhere or anywhere. And this takes time. At the end of the purport, Sri Prabhupada says, Baunam Janmanam Ante Gyanavam Mam It takes many, many births. 
until one comes to an understanding that Krishna is everything. And such a person is a very rare. To find such a person is not easy. It is difficult. So this is what the purport is trying to say. In short, it says, use your intelligence. And to use your intelligence, purify your senses. And by reasoning and perception, you can actually know Krishna, who is actually even in your heart, in the heart of everyone. He is residing in the heart of everyone. Like in the 15th chapter, Krishna says, Sarva Shacham Ridisha Nivishtam Matha Smriti Jnana Mapoharam Chit. Vedisa Sarva Ma Meda Vedya Vedya Vedanta Krishna Vedvita Yacham. Very, very powerful verse. That of all the Vedas, Krishna is to be known. So, but this verse is actually proving to us that yes, though Krishna is everything, he's still not far, he's very close to your heart. And he can be understood by <coughs> process of devotional service. In other words, by using our purified senses to know who is Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any additions, any questions? Please ask. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much. Yes. Hare Krishna. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, <clears throat> when we are talking about intelligence, uh, mm. so uh, Krishna says that the, the one who is devoted, he gives the intelligence to us. So, uh, is intelligence it that... and not just intelligence, even in understanding. Understanding, understanding is the part of intelligence. So, uh, one who is Tesham Satatiktanam Bajatam Priti Purvakam. That means when we are worshipping uh, Krishna with uh, with love and affection. Constant. So he, constant. constant. Yeah. Constant. So, when we are doing that, he gives the intelligence uh, to yes. reach him. Uh, yes. But to, to, to do that, you know, we also need certain intelligence to, to gain the knowledge to approach him. Uh, or to, uh, I mean, I mean, what, what is, what is, uh, like the difference between the two types of intelligence, Prabhuji. Okay, one intelligence is Krishna is giving from inside. From outside, the intelligence comes, comes from the Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. They give you the direction. You follow this procedure, you'll get it. Otherwise, not possible. For example, like we have been given a common intelligence, I mean, a common rule, chant Hare Krishna. It's not difficult and practical. In the age of Kali is the most practical. We simply chant. Now here, when you're chanting, it's not that you are reading and doing so many things. No, chanting means only chanting. But the holy name works in such a way that it awakens the Lord. I mean, the devotional service awakens in your heart. And if you go on chanting, at least for a reasonable number of years, Krishna will give you all the intelligence, even the knowledge. So one, a similar question was asked by one student when I used to teach in the school. That you said just that when you when you chant everything is everything is possible. I said yes. He said how? So I gave him a simple answer. I said if you are chanting, it means you are thinking of Krishna. He said yes. So if you are thinking of Krishna, it means you are focused. You are meditating on Krishna. So no dirty thoughts will come in you. No dirty brain will enter into your, no dirt will enter your brain and your mind is crystal clear. And you learn very quickly, you remember very quickly and you even present it very quickly. And it's exact form. And the student agreed, yes. Well, some, some students say that though we are reading, but we can't remember. So I asked them, yes, you are reading, you are writing, but you are not chanting. When you are not chanting, it means you are going out of the focus. You have to chant every Krishna. So one of the advantages of chanting is you remember everything you read from the scripture. Now many of our devotees even say that I just heard yesterday night or yesterday in the morning, today I have forgotten. Yes, you have forgotten, but your soul has captured it. At the right time, it is revealed that now it's back to you. I have seen this in a practical way. Sometimes it takes some time to dredge the memory, but you will remember everything, the name of the person, 
the chapter and everything. I also have that experience. In other words, the more we stay close in Krishna consciousness, the more we practice, it's a very big advantage to us because it's a constant purification which builds a very good intelligence. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any other uh, questions? Hare Krishna. <coughs> it was it was a, such a long purport and then a lot of information is given by Srila Prabhupada. It's a, yes. it's a really big purport. Yes. So we have to read this purport at least three to four times to absorb all the points. But the correct, simple correct. aim of the purport is use your logic, means reasoning, <coughs> and perceive properly by purified senses. Then you can know Krishna. Generally, your senses are not pure, but when because they become pure, that's why Shri Prabhupada is the right of <coughs> a detailed purpose to explain everything. He could have written eyes, no, he says seeing, smelling. Why he does like that? He shows in a practical way how we see. Like Chanakya Bandi says, a beautiful woman is perceived in a different way. By a devotee, he sees her. A living entity. And if she's beautiful, the beauty is given by Krishna. And if it is a lusty man, he sees her as an object of enjoyment. Dirty thoughts will come in his mind. And he's seen by a dog. A dog will see, simply see that the, if she dies, I can enjoy the flesh. <laughs> you see the three different ways of perceiving. So pursuing of a devotee or a yogi is always good. Because it's purified. So all this advice is given in the Bhagavatam, in Bhagavad Gita. How to perceive, how to use our senses. If you go to the fifth chapter, it says, Nave Dware. Nave Dware means our nine gates of our body, which are the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears, and its genital skin. If they are used properly, then you can capture the absolute very quickly. So all begins with the Navdwar. Navdwar means our senses. Yes. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you for this nice, uh, very nice class. You know, this uh, um, Kanji 2 is very, very technical. Mostly this, this chapter that we are reading, very technical and it, it's not easy to understand, but sometimes you devotees put it in such nice way, giving examples and also thank you very much, Prabhuji. And very nice class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, if there are no other uh, questions or comments, uh, can I request Indulekha Mataji uh, to end the session? Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, everyone. Krishna. So, for today, we have a lot to take again, as usual. Uh, despite being not well, again, Prabhuji is uh, trying to enlighten us because this uh, platform is very, very good. And whoever, like Mataji, is not uh, uh, too, um, she's a bit busy maybe at this time, she's not hosting, but again, this young um, Shashvin, he he's hosting, and you, Prabhuji, you are there all, always, every day you are there no, without fail on time, which is very good. So uh, it's not only us who are going to benefit, you are going to benefit more. The speaker is going to benefit more, purifying his senses and his speech and all. So all of us, we are benefiting a lot. And we are growing at the end of this year. And we have come a long way together. And I just uh, uh, pray to Lord Krishna that uh, we keep getting into this uh, this habit, we don't lose it. We don't go and enjoy for New Year and then forget everything. We keep this habit of uh, being together all the time. As I always say, you co we come together, we uh, read together, and we grow together. And I thank Krishna for all the speakers who come on the platform and give us, enlighten us, give us nice knowledge every day. Not a single day is missing. Even though there's no speaker, we manage to do something. 
So thank you, Babaji. Thank you, everyone. So we'll stop, and I will, I will uh, please request everyone to unmute and say, uh, let's chant the Mahamantra in the gratification of Prabhuji, who has given such a nice class. all of you, thank you for joining. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.